Greetings from Australia. My name is Ruth and I am an Australian legal practitioner here based in Australia. Well, in today's video, I will be sharing with you why the expression of interest process in my view is the most important process and top three tips I would like to share in order to gain a successful expression of interest. Now, please do not treat the contents of this video as legal advice because we do assess each case on a case by case basis. But I trust that the information in this video will help you add value to your visa application process. Well, without further ado, let's get started as to why the expression of interest process, in my view, is the most important step when applying for the GTI stream. Well, first of all, if you do not meet the requirements of an expression of interest, or let's say if you fail in that process, what it actually means is that you will not be able to receive an invitation to apply. And no invitation to apply means no visa application. You see, the GTI process is actually fairly different from some of the other traditional uh, visa application types. For example, if you were to apply for a work visa, or a um, student visa or a family visa, usually once you meet the requirements, you can actually immediately apply um, for the visa. And if there's any issues during that time, sometimes immigration might come back to you and say, oh, you're missing document XYZ and please provide more documents. Or if there's any issues with the um, application uh, and the application fails, in some cases you can actually appeal it and have uh, the tribunal, the court, to, to make a decision um, in your favor um, if you can show that uh, the uh, decision maker with, from immigration was not making the right decision. So you have that appeal avenue uh, in some cases, or you will be given a further opportunity to comment or provide more information on the usual application process. However, with the GTI visa stream, it's actually really different. You can't actually submit um, a GTI stream straight away because you have to go through a two-step process. So basically, you have to first start with an expression of interest. What it means is that you uh, essentially are expressing your interest and saying, hey, Australian immigration, you know, I'm really excited and I'm really interested to apply for this visa and I think I qualify for it. Um, so that's where immigration actually sort of screens out um, the good ones and the bad ones of uh, India terms, you know. Um, so it is so important that, you know, you make um, a good impression the very, very first time. Because if you make a really good impression on your expression of interest, and it's actually, um, your application is actually reviewed by a real person, uh, unlike skilled visas where the invitation is usually based on um, uh, the point system and the computerized system, but the GTI program, uh, it's actually a real human being who will actually be reading your expression of interest and they go through, you know, what you are writing, uh, the contents um, to see if you will be worth um, the invitation. So you need to prove your worth at the time uh, you provide your expression of interest. And that's why I believe that the EOI process is uh, as important, if not more important than the actual visa application process. Because with the expression of interest, if you succeed in this first step, then guess what? You will be invited to apply and you will uh, then be able to lodge an actual visa application uh, for the uh, GTI uh, stream. So that's why I believe it's really, really important to do your expression of interest well. And so here are the three tips for a successful expression of interest. Number one, ensure it is very well written, okay? Now, if writing is your strength, then perhaps you can give it a go. Make sure it's written in a concise manner. Uh, there is uh, limited space. And so if you know there's any grammatical errors, you might just wanna get like a friend or an academia who's really, really good um, in English to double check your work, make sure that it's actually professionally written and well written because first impression counts. I mean, imagine if you um, 
write an expression of interest and you submit that and it's full of grammatical errors, doesn't make sense, doesn't actually cover the points. I mean, what kind of impression are you giving to the case officer, right? So you want to be able to impress them. And, um, and if writing is not your strength, if coding is your strength, if fixing soil is your strength, you know, or if building a space aircraft is your strength, but writing is not your strength, seek professional help. Okay, whether it's from a lawyer like us, um, who, 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 uh, or someone, at least someone who's fami familiar with the uh, GTI process and who has got really, really good English. Okay, so ensure it is very well written. That's my first tip for you. Second, um, ensure that uh, when you're writing your expression of interest, that you actually understand the uh, GTI program overall, that you understand uh, what immigration is actually looking for, um, so that when you write, you are actually um, able to address all of the different criteria. Now, you may not mention it uh, as an obvious uh, uh, to say, you know, I actually meet all the criteria, but you want to be able to actually look at the GTI requirement overall uh, and make sure that you know that you can add value to the Australian immigration, uh, uh, the Australian government, the economy, um, and just familiarize yourself with it. So for that reason, um, I always encourage my clients to seek help from, you know, whether it's your uh, migration lawyer who is very well versed in GTI. Um, if you haven't got someone like that, contact us, you know, for help. Um, but it's really important that you bear in mind um, the visa application process because you see um, the case officer, so case officer is actually the person who is employed by the Australian immigration to um, to go through the expression of interest process. So they're like a teacher, you know, marking your exam papers. <laughs> so you know like how teachers, they've got the answer sheet and then they've got your answers and then they compare and then they go, well, yeah, we think that this person meets this requirement, you know, that that's the right answer, that's the right answer. So in the same way, uh, treat this as if it's actually an exam and as if your life depends on it, you know, don't take it lightly. Um, impress them the first chance you have. Show them that you're worthy for the invitation. So that's my second tip. Um, make sure that um, you know the GTI requirement overall. Um, and finally, uh, the third tip that I have for you is know which documents to provide and which ones not to provide. Now, the case officer is actually a human being. So you want to make sure that you respect their time, um, but you also want to make sure that you are able to impress them uh, with some of the selected few documents to just show them that, hey, you've got an edge here because you see the competition is so great. Um, you're competing amongst some of the brightest talents in the world for limited spaces uh, for this program. So, um, you know, whilst it's great um, to say, hey, I'm really good at this, you know, I'm the best person for uh, uh, advanced manufacturing, or I'm the best person for agricultural, uh, you know, uh, technology. Um, it actually speaks louder when a third party, an independent third party, um, says that about you. So in my view, I always advise my clients whenever we're hel helping them out, we say, well, can you find a uh, strong reference, um, someone who's really well versed, even if they're not an Australian, you know, um, someone you've worked before, like your director, perhaps, to say that you're actually outstanding in, in your performance, to actually vouch for you. So I believe that's really, really important uh, because what people say about you um, is important. It, it's almost like, you know, you go on Amazon to buy a product, right? And then you go through the different ones and then you read through the reviews, you know, you, you get the one star review or then you, and then you see the five star review and you think, oh, I might want to go with the five star review because this product seems really, really good. So in the same way, um, case officers, you know, are human beings, you know, they uh, can be biased uh, in a good way towards 
uh, a third party's professional opinion about you. So for that reason, I believe it's really important that you know which documents to provide. But also, please do respect the case officer's time. Don't provide them with like 500 pages of document, you know, which they have no time to go through. Um, so it's a very, very simple process. You know, you want to be concise. But I would say um, in my experience, sometimes I do feel like the expression of interest process is actually harder than the actual visa application process because with the actual visa application process, you can upload a lot more documents and you can tell your story in a broader manner. You can say a lot more. Whereas for the expression of interest process, you've got this much room, this many documents you can upload. And so it has to be done in a professional manner. So I hope those three tips were helpful. And I hope this explains why the expression of interest process is so, so important. Um, if you need help, uh, from us, please do not hesitate to drop us an email address on the email address below. It would be my pleasure to assist. But otherwise, uh, thank you so much for taking the time to watch our video. And I wish you the very best in your future endeavors for your Australian visa pursuit. Thank you and I'll see you next time. Bye.